Peter Rabbit and the Pumpkin Patch. After suffering through the stiffening heat of summertime, the cool, crisp air of the autumn always makes one feel more lively. It certainly had this effect upon Benjamin Bunny and his cousin Peter Rabbit. Late one fall afternoon, Benjamin Bunny set off with a hop, skip and a jump into the woods. He was going to see his cousins. The woods were full of rabbit's holes and in a sand bank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Leave Peter Rabbit. Peter lived with his mother and his sister. Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail in the woods behind Mr. McGregor's garden. Benjamin found Peter helping his mother wind rabbit wool yarn. When old Mrs. Rabbit told Peter he could go, Benjamin laid Peter outside to the fir tree. Do you know what time of year this is? Benjamin asked his cousin. Peter gave a little note. It must be harvest time in Mr. McGregor's garden, said Peter. Yes, said little Benjamin, and then he whispered, I'm certain that the parsnips are ready for Mrs. McGregor to bring inside. Pumpkin too, added Peter. He did love pumpkin at this time of year. It seems such a shame to the little rabbits for the autumn harvest time to come and go without a taste of beetroot or a few nice ripe carrots for that matter or even some late onions or sweet corn. They had missed the garden beans altogether. Some weeks earlier, they had watched Mr. McGregor pull them off the vine and take them into Mrs. McGregor when all the bunnies had hopped for was several boards each. After having supper with his relative, Benjamin's bunny let his aunt think he had gone home. But later, when the moon rose over the woods full of and killer, and Mrs. Rabbit had gone to borrow something from a neighbor, Peter sneaks out of the rabbit hole to the fir tree, where Benjamin was waiting. The two were off to Mr. McGraw's garden. The moon lit the way, and the little rabbits were in high spirit in that crisp night air. They felt that a great adventure was in store, but Peter couldn't help but wonder if they might be carried away by an owl. He suggests to his cousin that they not stay out long. As they had done before, the little rabbits climbed down the pear trees into the garden, lit up by the moonlight. They saw some Spanish leaves but kept going. They were looking for pumpkin and tasty parsnips. But Peter heard noises and began to go slower. Suddenly he stopped. Something fire frightening was looming near the pumpkin patch. Peter grabbed Benjamin's and ducked behind a wheelbarrow. When they were feeling braver, they peeked around. Why, it's only a scarecrow wearing one of Mr. McGregor's old night shirts, whispered, begins, whispered Benjamin's bunny. He began to creep toward the pumpkins again. Just then, the moon went to behind a cloud, making everything go quite dark. Peter could barely see his cousin's white tipped ear and an awful screeching hole sounded nearby. The bunnies were dreadfully frightened and rushed nearly straight into a wall. Why, look, Peter, said Benjamin Bunny after a moment in his loudest whisper. It's only Mr. McGregor's cat. Peter was tumbling with fright. But when the cloud passed the moon, he could just see the cat inside Mr. McGregor's cartridge. The cat, the cat was howling because she knew the bunnies were nearby. Peter said he should like to go home anyway. He was worried that his mother would be back from the neighbors and would be missing him by now. But the two were nearly at the pumpkin's patch, and Benjamin told Peter they certainly couldn't stop their adventure now. They found some parsnip on the way, which they began to nibble. The bunnies had swallowed a few mouthfuls of the delightful parsnip when 
come crash. Poor Peter and Benjamin Bunny, they began to run and dart and zigzag away as fast as they could go, never once looking back until they reached the pear trees. There's nothing there, said Benjamin, surprised. The rabbits didn't know it was only a rat that had noisily blown over in the wind wind and landed on a watering can but peter was busy trying to scramble to the top of a compost heap and safely back over the wall peter ran all the way home and when benjamin finally caught up to him at the sand bag they stopped to rest before going inside they didn't want old mrs rabbit to think they they had been in any trouble i did so want a bit of Pumpkin said Peter wistfully. As the two bunnies rounded the sand bank, they saw a curious sight, but this time, instead of running away in fear, the cousins hurried to get a closer look. Old Mrs. Rabbit had craved a jack o' lantern for Flopsy, Mep, Mopsy, Cotton Tail, and Peter and lit a candle inside it. Oh joy, it was a party with treats and lively games, but Peter seemed rather quiet. Mrs. Rabbit figured that he had got into some mischief and had learned his lesson about going out at night. And Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, and Peter and Benjamin Bunny had creamy boiled pumpkin and pumpkin seed for dessert. Yummy, yummy, the end.